one of your favorite guests and mine who is just uh, very busy hanging out with Sean Hannity today. Welcome back to the Dr. Gina Show, Billy Hollowell, the faith editor for The Blaze. We're glad to have you on today, Billy. Hey, how you doing? I am well, except for sickened still by this Gosnell stuff that uh, it just uh, the media won't seem to cover it, except for you and I and a few others out there. Um, and some of the hypocrisy going on here, I think, is precisely the reason why they're not covering it. But you were up close and personal in this trial. Tell us what we don't know from behind the scenes. Absolutely. I was there last week. I was there yesterday, and the defense rested yesterday, which a lot of people may not know because, it, again, it hasn't been as heavily covered as mm -hmm. it should be. Um, the defense did not call one witness in his in his defense, and he also did not take the stand, which I didn't expect him to, but the fact that there were no witnesses was sort of interesting. They rested. Um, the jury is expected to be charged on Tuesday, so hopefully by Wednesday there will be a verdict. And um, really, all I can tell you about being inside the courtroom is that it's really horrific when you hear you know, firsthand the things that this guy allegedly did. Um, and mm. it's not just him. It's the employees who worked under him, uh, you know, cutting the spines of, of babies uh, who, who were already born and also, you know, doing abortions allegedly that were, were so late term. Were they using the word fetus as you wrote the article about that's posted at DocGTV? Were, were they using the word fetus to describe born babies? Well, that's a, re that's a really interesting question. We did a report today about the New York Times. They did send a reporter to cover this, but what ended up happening is that in the report they referred numerous times, like four or five or six times, to the born babies in this case as being fetuses. <laughs> Uh, that is very curious because we all know the word fetus is an unborn child. And a lot of people don't like that term. Other people do. But that's besides the point when you're talking about um, babies that were already born and, and you know, purportedly killed. To refer to them as, as fetus is sort of odd. So that has ca that's caught a little bit of, ten of attention in the way that the Times actually covered the story. What were some of the more shocking things that you heard that you wish the American public understood in this case? Um, are you okay if I get a little bit graphic, or would you have, rather have me refrain? Because it's all... It's I mean, very it's graphic. So yeah, graphic. I think people... I, I hate it, but I think people have to understand the realities here. So go ahead, please. Absolutely. So one of the babies was said to be breathing for about 20 minutes before one of the employees snipped the baby's spine, and they would insert you know, scissors into the back of the neck to do that. Um, another one of these lives was uh, killed, these babies was killed in a toilet... Um, apparently, the woman delivered the baby into the toilet. It was moving. It was, you know, swimming. That was actually the quote from the testimony. Um, in the toilet, trying to get out, that baby's uh, spine was then severed. And the people doing this, you know, Gosnell would allegedly do it, but the employees also were the ones doing this. And it's important to remember, he's saying he's totally innocent here, but you have eight people, including his wife, who have pled guilty uh, to, to some of this stuff happening and who have testified to seeing it. That's where these accounts are coming from, from the employees working in what is described as a house of horrors. Did any babies, did they ever, was it ever too much? Was there any instance where they went, okay, no, we can't do this to this baby. It's just too big. Well, you know, it's funny because some of the pictures actually came from some of the employees, like they, they noticed, wow, that baby's really big. I'm going to take a picture of it. Um, so, yeah, there, there were moments of shock, but there was also one employee, and I'm, I'm forgetting her name at the moment, but she, um, I think it may have been Karina Cross, she was so disturbed that she actually did take pictures and then reported them to authorities, but, but used a relative's name because she had been working there, I believe, for a couple of years. and um, But at some point, it did become too much. And I think... You know, the way that they testified, it's just so shocking. You can't imagine ever going along with this, but a lot of the people just said, he said it was okay, he told us that the baby wasn't breathing, and we believed him. Um, and, it, and it's also important to remember that these people were not real medical professionals. I think the majority of them, um, even the doctors, quote-unquote doctors working there, um, they didn't even have, uh, they weren't even medically registered, some of them. So Well, you don't have to be a medical professional to know the difference between life I and agree. death and good and bad and right and wrong. And uh, so that's certainly no excuse. But um, were there, did you, and I hate to repeat my question, but I'm just curious, were there any that got away? I guess I just want to believe that somebody had a conscience there and actually said, no, we can't do this. Did you hear any stories like that at all? 
No, I, I have not heard any stories. Uh, there was actually one incident, and this one's a little disturbing. There was apparently a room where the bodies were kept after the, the babies were, were killed and the abortions were had. And in that room, one of the, the quote-unquote nurses said that she walked into the back. Um, somebody, you know, some intern said, come here. And when she walked back, one of the babies was, was making noise mm. um, and, and crying. And she said it sounded like an alien. And she sort of ran out of the room because she couldn't take it. That's the closest that I heard to any sort of story of anybody saying, you know, we can't take this, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do this. But in terms of the, the spine snipping, no, I haven't heard anything like that. Was there any testimony at all about um, post-traumatic stress disorder from working in this hellhole? That's an interesting question. I didn't see every single testimony, so I can't definitively answer that. But I haven't seen anything in the coverage that I've done and read that would indicate that. Now, I can't imagine, I mean, these people would have had to have been pretty desensitized to go along with this. Um, it's important to note that one of the women, uh, I believe she was 20, she's 22 years old now. She was 15 years old when she started working at the clinic. 15. Mm. Um, and she was giving drugs to the women and, and, you know, helping put them under and actually assisting in these abortions at 15 years old. Um, so that's one individual you could say, okay, it was, it was pretty much a child. Still, she should have known what was right and wrong, but um, but yeah, you know, it's just it, it boggles your mind. It's almost like this can't be real as mm -hmm. you read the details. Yeah, and you just pray that we're not becoming numb to this. Uh, Billy, what's your best prediction of the outcome of this? Well, he's got a lot of charges against him. I think the eight that we've heard most about are obviously these murder charges, and three of those have been dismissed um, because there wasn't evidence, according to the, the judge and the defense, that the babies were born alive. But I, I can't imagine he's going to get off on all of these counts. You know, one of the, the five remaining is an immigrant woman who died during a botched abortion, and the rest of them are the babies. I mean, this guy, this guy's in big trouble, um, and, and I can't imagine he's going to get away. So we'll have to wait and see what happens on Wednesday. But, I mean, the jury has sat through this for weeks now. They've seen some of the most horrific things you can imagine, and um, I'll be interested to see what they come away with at the end. Well, I certainly will, too. Do you care to tell us about what you're doing there with uh, our buddy Sean, or is that, is that a secret? Oh, no. In fact, I'm actually on Sean's show today, too, talking pretty extensively about Gosnell. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, he, he, I was really glad he opened up the, the door to, to talk about that, because I think it's important. And we got into some of the details, as we did on this show here, the graphic details of what um, allegedly happened at that clinic, at the Women's mm -hmm. uh, Society. And so... I would encourage people to listen to that interview, too, because it, it's disturbing, and I know it's hard to listen to, but I think we need to be talking about this, and we need people to confront what uh, late-term abortion really is. Absolutely. As the mother of a child who uh, would have and could have been aborted, who has Down syndrome and was advised to be aborted many, many times, and I got to adopt him because his mother uh, wasn't able to do that and didn't do that, and so I'm very thankful for that. Tell Sean thank you for his coverage. Thank you so much, Billy, for continuing to keep this issue on the front burner for those of us who understand the real Holocaust-esque uh, tragedy going on here and um, and the, the people's brazenness in all of this. So I really appreciate your coverage too, Billy. Thanks so much, and thanks for having me on. I love being on the show. I love having you. Billy Hollowell from The Blaze. You can check out all of the links are on DocGTV.com for you to make it convenient. And uh, this is one man you should follow on Facebook and Twitter and wherever you can because he is reporting news that nobody else is.